Hey, we are live. So hopefully everything was working. I've been trying to I got the echo again. Oh, well, we'll deal with it tonight. <laughs> I've been trying to play with the new microphone that I got for Christmas. I let Trevor and Joey use it last week, and it's just been kind of, kind of, I don't know. Until I get it right, we'll see. I got to find my sweet spot. So welcome to the show, guys. I'm excited for this one. It's the first one of the new year. We've been waiting for a while. Uh, we booked this one a while back, and uh, there's a reason why I booked this one. For the first of the year, you'll find out why later. I got a cool little story to tell everybody. So, um, but as always, uh, big shout out to our, our sponsors, uh, Arlo Revolution. You saw there at the beginning of the show, and um, some great stuff he's doing out there. Just go check him out with all of his weddings and music videos. Uh, check him out on Facebook, YouTube. Some really good stuff. So, all right, make sure we're all live. And then also, a big shout out to Janet and Joel L. Art on a Higher Wire and Janet Sloth Creative. Check both of them out. Amazing, amazing work by both of them in uh, both creative work and paintings, which Joel is just amazing at. So how's your New Year's, guys? I mean, I, I'm kind of lying to everybody. You see a bottle of Jack sitting here, but I've, I haven't had anything to drink yet this New Year, and I think I'm going to keep it that way for a little bit. We'll see what happens. But uh, if you guys are hear me and everything looks good, shoot a comment out. Just let me know you guys are in the comments so we can keep it rolling. But um, you can't. You can hear me though, right? All right, cool. It says we have some viewers, so I'm just making sure. Maybe we might be rolling without any comments tonight, man. We've done this in the past where where it's fun. <laughs> we just got to roll without comments sometimes. But if it happens, it happens. Yeah, we got comments, so they're saying it's right now. They're coming up. All right. <laughs> Sorry, it's, it sounds like I'm talking to myself, but I really am talking to my, tonight's guest in my ears tonight. So <laughs> now I see everybody's comments. All right, good guys. Um, we're gonna go off and start off and talk about my Patreon. If you guys have been on it yet, if you guys haven't, go check it out. A lot of cool little perks. Every month I do a really cool giveaway. Uh, Angie Thompson, uh, she won last week. Uh, Trevor picked her name. She got some really cool stuff. This month, I'm going to do another really cool prize pack. So right before December, I kind of just cleaned off all my stuff or cleaned out all my stuff. And anything I had doubles over whatever, I just threw off to the side. I'm like, I'm going to use this for giveaways for the Patreon and just some really cool stuff. So this month, I went and dug out. Let's see. This might be the last month for some good stuff. But um, so we got Gorge. Uh yeah, from June 28th and June 29th, out, in, uh, out by Seattle. Yeah, Gorge Amphitheater. Friday night and Saturday night posters. I got the blue Desperate Man vinyl, the new Jeremy Spillman book. There's a bunch of stuff I threw in there all together. So make sure you guys head on over to Patreon. Check this out. Uh, just be a private sponsor of the show, and you get your name entered. And every month, I would do something cool, a little giveaway. And anything over our production costs, I've been given to Chief Cares, a percentage of it to Chief Cares. So um, just a lot of cool stuff I'm going to be doing. I can't wait. So some fun stuff up there. I'm going to have some cool special stuff and whatnot. And uh, yeah, so I want to play a quick video for you guys. Hang on. So something big happened today. Let's play this. You guys could see it. Yeah. You've got, You've a, got new a new tour, tour with, with, a, with a very, very ominous, ominous word, word in, in its name. name. What, is, what, is, we, we do. what, is, what it is it called? It is called, it is called the Farewell, the farewell tour. tour. So you heard those words. Um, a lot of people in the choir, I I could see there could have been some celebrations out there. But just like when Rich Cassie was on a couple weeks ago, we got to remember, we got to promote what we love. And uh, I want to wish everything the best to Rascal Flats. I mean, 20 years, a lot of bands don't get to go 20 years. And to have them go that long, and I know Eric and Rascal Flats have kind of buried the, the hatchet a little bit. And Eric was young. I mean, what he did is any young up and coming group would probably do something like this. You got to Madison Square Garden, you got those Eagle ramps, you turn it up, you're a little late, play a little louder, play a little longer, something like that. Um, it happened back then. And things is years ago. But I want to wish the best to Rascal Flats um, with everything. They're, the farewell tour kicks off in June. I might try to hit up at least one of the shows because I would like to see see them. I mean, they're still we're, we're one of the best country groups, country pop groups in the last 20 years that I've been a part of. I know my wife was a huge Rascal Flatts fan. 
Um, one of my favorite songs they they did, which w- what hurt the most, uh, written by Jeffrey Steele. Aaron Lewis also covered it, but uh, hearing Jeffrey Steele sing was just amazing. But uh, Rascal Flatts put on one heck of a career, and you got to tip your hat to that because it's kind of hard these days, especially now um, in the age of digital and everything else. And love them or hate them, but uh, they were one heck of a band, and I won't wish them the best. And yeah, no more me and my gang tours. <laughs> But uh, we're going to get to tonight's show. I just want to touch on that real quick because, I mean, it's it's crazy seeing a band that young doing a farewell tour. I mean, yeah, granted, it sets them up 10 years down the road for a reunion show. It's going to have a reunion tour. It's going to happen. Um, you know it will. But it's just kind of see what they do next. I mean, maybe they want to do solo projects or whatnot. We'll see. Oh, well, but I'm ready. Are you guys ready for tonight's show? I mean, I, I've been planning for tonight for a while, so I'm kind of kind of amped up for this. Let's bring him on. What do you guys say? Let's well, bring in good old Robert. Me, What's up, man? <laughs> so I'm sure we're still getting comments, but every now and then, all of these comments will pop up and then slow down. So I think we got a little bit of a lag. Well. For some reason, I don't see any comments, but <laughs> well, see, that's what I'm telling you. Because a lot of times in the it's past, people told me they don't even see me. Do you see me? I see you, but I don't okay. see any comments. <laughs> yeah, I've heard people's like, "Oh, we don't see you," and I'm like, yeah. "Oh, I'm trying." <laughs> I see you. So happy New Year, man! How are you doing? Good. Happy New Year to you. I'm doing you good. Ready for tonight, or you been preparing? Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> I got a couple of stories to tell. Oh, I'm sure you do. I mean, well, you're a newer fan to all of this. I mean, yeah. you came on. What was your like the first? When did you hear about Eric Church? Tell us how you stumbled across the name. Uh, I took this new job in 2007, and and everybody that was listening to country music, and at the time I was not a country music fan at all. <laughs> and I heard uh, "Hell on the Heart" on the radio a couple of times, and then I heard. <laughs> love you love the most and smoke a little smoke yeah and then i was just like wow and then my friends were like oh we're gonna go see toby keith and eric church is opening up and i was like okay i'm i'm down <laughs> toby keith sucked and eric blew the doors off the place i was gonna say so that was 2011 i got married september 9th and i got my guitar i think Two weeks, the one over my shoulder. Two weeks after the show, you saw him. Yeah. Well, At the end of September, it was a Toby Keith. It was a Lock and Loaded tour, and that right. was my hundredth show. Wow. It was Chicago when I came to. That was my first show. <laughs> that's awesome, I though. I, I mean, wasn't it, really even a fan at the time. I was just like, I'm just going to go, you know. So, who are you a fan of before that? I mean, uh, this, that question might come up again later, but yeah, I was into like uh, Aerosmith, Van Halen, Led Zeppelin, The Who. Eric Clapton, Kiss, <laughs> everything basically. A lot of I was say, you see the pictures I'm throwing up, correct? Everything except for country music. <laughs> yeah. Is that is that a photo of you and the Kiss Army back in the seventies, or it's me and my brother and my two next door neighbors? That is uh, awesome. Dressed up like Kiss and put on a little Kiss concert for. This uh, is back when you had hair, still, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Which one's you in this picture? I'm all the way to the right. I'm ace. Yeah, all right. Spaceman, dude. <laughs> yeah. That is an awesome. When you sent that picture over, I was like, that is an epic picture. I'm like, there's no way I'm not putting that up there. <laughs> yeah. I didn't realize back then how much, uh, you know, I love music. It's yeah. It's, music is just something different. I know we, we share common passion with music and everything else. It's just. I know it's it's something different in life. It's just that we always connect to, and that's why this show is cool. Just connecting all these stories because we've all met at different shows, and we'll talk about how you stumbled upon the choir and whatnot. But we always met at these different shows, and it's always been the music that brought us to them. But we've kind of formed friendships out of it. I know Eric was talking about, or the ads this year was saying it was more than just music, and it's kind of became that with everybody. And I wanted to kind of bring everybody together and. And do this. <laughs> Mary says that's your new nickname. Ace. <laughs> now I now I see the comment. Okay, you see Mary's comment now? I see Mary's comment, sure. So when I put them on the screen, you get to see the comments. All uh, right. 
Space Ace. <laughs> Space Ace, man. Space Man. <laughs> <laughs> he was just, I think in December, he just played Joe's Live close to he, the house. He plays close by me all the time. But there was something going on. I couldn't go, but it was all ages. I was going to take my kid. I'm like, but he wouldn't notice him without the makeup. Yeah. So, but I know Jackson, he, he always asked me about Kiss. He wants to go see Kiss again. <laughs> well, I think this is the farewell tour, but it might be like the 10th. It's like the three-year farewell tour. So, okay. well, you know, you, you see how they're doing it. I mean, first they say farewell to one lineup. Then they say farewell to the next lineup. <laughs> how many lineups do they don't know? So, it's, uh, it's, I mean, I really hope, uh, I know, I know we're getting off topic now. We're talking about Kiss, but I really hope on this tour, this farewell tour, the last show they're talking about in New York that they're going to do, that a lot of the older guys, like, everybody comes out. Like, I'd love to see them all come back. All the re- remaining members alive. Yeah. Just see how many would show up. I mean, I don't know if some of them will, but <laughs> it'd be cool. Yeah. I know my first show was, what was it, 96? I want to say 96 in West Virginia. My dad took me to see him. It was my first concert. So mm. it was the original lineup, which was amazing. Yeah. What was the tour? I want to say it was the Alive, Alive Worldwide. Nice. Alive Worldwide, 96, 97. I'm looking, I got a poster in the basement. I was like, yeah, 96, 97. But they played Wheeling, West Virginia. Um, it was funny. I mean, I, this this story is for a whole other podcast one day. And it, this story could take an hour. And I'm not going to tell it, but. The opening band was what was cool about us because it was at my uncle's stadium in West Virginia. And he, right after the opener sound checked, and I didn't even know who they were or anything, didn't even recognize any music. I got to go out and play football with the opener. And I realized it was Rob Zombie's little brother. It was Power Man 5000. <laughs> and I'm like, that was cool that I got to play football with Power Man 5000 back in 96 or whatever. So, one of my fun stories. <laughs> so, anyways, back on topic. Yeah, <laughs> the, the first few shows I went to, I d- didn't know anyone. You know, I would buy two tickets and like make one of my friends go with me, mm. and show up and like right when Eric Church would come out, miss all the pre-show stuff, and <laughs> it's so different now. Like my experience, like knowing so many friends, mm-hmm. where. Instead of just showing up right at the showtime, I'm wanting to get there as early as possible. So you're you're like me. You would kind of you would kind of say, "Hey, I'm going to the show. Who wants to go with me?" And if no one want, would say, nobody, hey, wanted, nobody go, wants to go, I, you I didn't normally just drag, yourself then. <laughs> I dragged three different friends three different times, and my yeah, wife, not... and my wife once or twice. <laughs> but no, so nobody be... really liked it. That's the whole thing. It was like. I was making them go, and you know, my wife kind of got brought into it. <laughs> Let's see. One, I'm going to one of my three uh, like. What was that? I said one of the three guys likes it. <laughs> it's not like the same like I like it and you like it, but well, I was know. talking like we all like we all formed this friendship here. But I was talking with a couple like like Johnson and Frazee and all those guys not too long ago, and we were talking about. I, I was kind of asking them about like like friends like we all had friends outside of church and like did this kind of your passion rub off on any of your friends before this so you came from a different genre of music have you rubbed off any of your like your good friends from back in the day or anything like that i try all the time but only like a couple <laughs> of friends like it they think you're crazy huh yeah most people don't even know where our church is <laughs> <laughs> Let's see i'm trying to read these comments i could show them there Oh, they're saying that Toby Keith or Kyle said that was his first uh, church show. Yeah. So it was yours too. Look at that. A lot of people are having a first he, on that he had, one. He, had, he just played home, you know, homeboy for the, like, you know, it was first time he was playing it out <laughs> and drinking my hand, I think. Yeah, right. I think well, drinking my hand probably was the big one. Well, Springsteen, I think, was probably the big one. Well, Springsteen yeah. was the big one, but it didn't come to all. It was. After the first show I went to. Yeah. I well, not singing it yet. I say, is that back when he was still playing the piano? <laughs> he introduced it to, with the piano. Yeah. Well, the, the first time I saw Eric when he was headlining, Eric came out and played piano. Had a big yeah. back. 
Always a good time with that. Always a good time. He, good he opened one. with the piano and he finished it with the piano. One of the coolest shows I, I, I've always mentioned. I mean, I don't know if I mentioned on this show, but I've told people about it. Uh, I saw Eric in. He was with Kenny in Indy. So I forgot what year, but he opened with Springsteen. So like he opened up, he was just on the stage by himself mm-hmm. playing the piano. And the very first song he played was Springsteen. I'm like, this is genius. Why doesn't he do this more often? <laughs> Well, I went to see the Blood, Sweat, and Beers tour probably three or four times, mm-hmm. and he opened every show where he like came up out of the floor with smoke, playing, <laughs> playing country music, Jesus. <laughs> and he would totally mix it up. That was always a fun one when you'd open up with that. So oh God, that was the best. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely raising up out of the floor, you always be like, all right. Because then you're like, how do you get under there? I know I talked with either Carla or Sweet Caroline. He snuck under there with like a wig on and stuff. That was crazy. Oh, Lynn saying her first show was canceled due to a storm in 2012. I think I remember that. Like, I remember mm. that happened. I forgot it was in, like, I think it was up in New York. Yeah, it was in New York, I think. All right. Someone's asking about the Hartford show already. So we're going to jump into that. Daniel wants to know about the Hartford show. <laughs> Talk about the Hartford show. <laughs> is this is this something we should say for the post show, or is this something? <laughs> <laughs> well, Chuck Lavelle is at the uh, Hartford show. Oh, uh, but that was interesting. Yeah, <laughs> I'm trying to think oh. if it was at Hartford or New Hampshire. I can't remember. I want to get up to these. Somebody, somebody will have to comment. Those their, their are pretty ideas. wild at times. I, I think it was at Hartford, but it could have been New Hampshire. <laughs> as far as I get out east, is uh, I'll get out to. Well, I was in Pittsburgh this year, so I got out that far. Pretty sure it was Hartford. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what's the story? Is want you to just want to talk about, it, or is he just trying to bust your chops for it? What's that? Is that he's just trying to bust your chops for the show? What do you mean? Oh, he said ask ask you about Hartford. Who I said Dan? Yeah, because oh, I went with Dan. That's why. Oh, okay. Dan and, I, Dan and I sat together in Hartford. That's why he wants to talk about it. <laughs> it was a Hartford. It was a good time. It's kind of a blur. It was, it, it, that was a Buffalo show. Um, it, it was it didn't get flooded or something like that. I forgot what happened. Something it it got flooded or. I, I drove all the way to Buffalo, like five hours with my wife. We left work half day. Mm-hmm. We Dan Dan and Lynn invited me to their Buffalo choir party, and I had never even met them yet. You know, like just <laughs> from talking to them through through the fan group or whatever. Yeah. And uh, we got there too late to go to the party, so we never hooked up in Buffalo at all. But we finally met at your uh, pre party in that. In that- Oh, that was a fun one, dude. That was a that was a good party. That was a good party. Um, I think that was the night. Yeah, that was that because the night before that was when I was in Louisville. And I freaking tore my ligament in my thumb, and I didn't know that at that time. Uh, that's right. 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 <laughs> so yeah, I'm trying to announce winners, and it was hotter than heck. That's one thing. I mean, we gotta watch out these choir parties in, in Nashville. We gotta make sure there's air conditioning. <laughs> Either that, we're gonna go like in a cooler part. We gotta tell Staples, hey, book one in the. No, I actually I did that one in Nashville. It's like we're we're following church's tour schedule. It's gonna be like in Arizona in July next year. <laughs> <laughs> so let's see. I'm gonna look at these some of these pictures you sent over. So all right, well before we go ahead and do all that, what's your take on Rascal Flats on this whole thing today? I know it's been like the talk of the town. The farewell tour. They're young. Church choir uh, be celebrating, but <laughs> I don't really care because I'm not a fan of rap. No. Where I, no, that's no, not no, like no. What was that? I, I don't want to go to the show. I'm, <laughs> I'm no interest, huh? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> you come from the Aerosmith background, so you're more. Yeah, I mean, I can see how that rub off on with church. So I took my dad. My dad and I went and saw Eric. Uh, it was. Bob Seger tour in like 06. It was right after the he got kicked off the Flats tour. <laughs> and that was a fun one. I didn't even know who Eric Church was then either. No? No. <laughs> Not in 2011, huh? 
2011, pretty much, yeah. So what well, you said it was kind of Carolina-ish. What was the song that kind of made you or kind of brought you in and said, this guy, this guy has something. Kind of wanted to make you dig into more. Hell on the Heart. Okay. First song. That's a good one because that, I mean, that's a more, that's more of his popular songs. And you coming from like the Aerosmith world, what turned you on about Hell on the Heart? I don't know. I think it was just his voice. Just the voice of it? It's kind of the lyrics of it singing from the heart. Just, uh, <laughs> I don't know, just hit me good. It's funny because Susan says bargain bin. Yeah, I mean, you could probably find flats in the bargain bin. It's funny because Hell in the Heart, uh, I'm a big rock band junkie and I was for years. And Hell in the Heart was always the only Eric Church song that ever made to rock band. So even now, when I have like rock band parties in the house, we'll still play it. But it's always fun. I think that's kind of just grown on me that song, but uh. <laughs> You don't hear it much anymore. I think you got to hear it a couple times. Um, I think he played it maybe a couple times on Double Down, but you don't really get to hear the song much. No. Nah. Nope. <laughs> so I think he, you know, there's once. Once I, huh? I'm trying to think what show it was. I don't know. Double Down feels like forever ago. <laughs> so do you, you did a lot of Double Down tours or shows, right? Yeah, I did nine. Nine. What was your best or what was your favorite, do you think? Probably North Carolina. Really? What made that one stand out over all the other ones? It just seems so loud. <laughs> the crowd or the energy? Everything. <laughs> yeah. I I mean, I had a great seat and it was a lot of energy and it was loud. It seemed like the loudest show of all of them. Really? So I haven't seen him in Carolina for a while, but I always hear Fire Party. I just found some pictures. I always hear just wild stories about all these different store tour stops out that way. And the crowd. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Someone's saying the tailgate. So was it the tailgate in must be a, a wild tale? Oh, Hardy had that tailgate party, didn't he? What tailgate party? In North Carolina, I don't know. Oh, I Nobody says the tailgate. I think that was Hardy's tailgate party in North Carolina. We missed it. Oh, you missed that one? I guess. <laughs> yeah. We got to the show right right on time, pretty much. I was going to say, you, you, that's kind of common with you, huh? Yeah. <laughs> you said that earlier. I'm a last-minute concert goer. So even if there is an opener, you don't even, you don't even stop to see him, huh? Well, yeah, probably not. <laughs> Unless it's I, like I did see right? a couple of openers. Uh, <laughs> I can't think of who, but I saw a couple, but nobody great. No, no. So who was? Let's see. I'm gonna try to think. What was your favorite concert that you've ever been to before you ever went and saw a church? Hmm. <laughs> it's kind of limited, <laughs> but I, I did go see Monsters of Rock in like 1986. All right, Metallica, Scorpions, Doc, right. Van Halen. I, you know, it was like eight bands. That was probably pretty cool. <laughs> so you you like the festival gig with all the bands and everything like that? So I, it's funny. Like I wasn't really a, a big concert goer like my whole life till till I discovered I liked Eric Church and. It was just like every time I could get close enough, you know, at, at first I would never even travel to go to a concert. Maybe yeah. I'd go, you know, we lived in a tri-state area, New York, New Jersey, PA, Connecticut, all within three hours drive. So anywhere in that region, I'd go to a show, but I'd never think to drive seven hours or 20 hours to a show when I was. So what keeps you coming back? Is it the music or is it the the commodity or the friendship that we everybody has i mean what well i, I it's definitely the music because i love the music <laughs> yeah. but i love like the friends that i have made so it's so much more fun to go now than when i was going by myself yeah it's like so many people are going by themselves and we're all going to the same place over and over oh yeah for sure uh oh, I think you you sparked something with Patty. Mark Monster Rock, Kingdom Come was on that tour too. She said, mm, <laughs> "So you have a 2014 story about Patty." 
I, I'm gonna tell my Patty story. That's what I was saying. I want to hear your Patty story. She's gonna come over here and she's gonna say something. So she has to have to call her out now. <laughs> so in 2014, I dragged my friend Eric to Uncasville, Connecticut, to see Eric Church. He really wasn't into it at all, and uh, probably like halfway through the show, Eric calls out Patty Tibb and says that a longtime church choir member is in the audience. And he wants her to pick a song to for him to play, you know, whatever song she wants. And this year, my friend uh, Scott Libin says to me, do you want to drive to Greensboro, North Carolina, and go see Eric Church? And I'm like, sure. So we're driving down, and he's had a couple of bootleg CDs, and we're listening to the Uncasville show from 2014. <laughs> and I... I hear the part where Eric calls out Patty's name and just like right in February when I went to Boston, I had posted some videos up on the website and Patty messaged me, you know, that she's in my video. If I had any photos of Eric kissing her, <laughs> and, uh, so I looked through all my pictures and videos and I sent them to Patty and, uh, you know, here it is like 2019 and I, you know, just, she, I was in the front row, and she was in the, on the edge of the pit. We were like right across from each other at the concert, but we never really met. And um, like I didn't realize it was her either, obviously, because I really never seen her before. And then um, finally, we got to meet in New Hampshire and Hartford. Nice. Yeah. She has been one. I hope. Look at there goes my, <laughs> my mic again. Sorry, hang on. Let me change the setting. Now it's not going to want to work on me. So <laughs> we get some fun audio all night. Why this thing is going to rebute. Uh, Patty, I really hope to have her on the show. So she is very shy, as you know, and met her before. So I hope to have her on her. But she has been one of the longest. And she has she, just the way she is with music. And she's kind of like you and I have has a wide range of just different people we listen to and off the spectrum i know she's a big rock fan too and that's why she even commented on her monsters of rock on your monsters of rock comment so it's like in 2014 i didn't even know there was a church choir at my you know it was probably <laughs> my fifth or sixth show or maybe and i still didn't even know anything about the choir until i heard them call patty's name and talk about the choir a little bit and i don't think i joined till late 2010 Hey, can you still hear me? All right, there we go. Sorry, I froze up for a second. <laughs> I'm trying to fix this audio and it locked my whole everything up. I was like, oh no. I can hear you. All right. Even though I probably sound like I'm in a hallway somewhere. <laughs> I hit something on this mic and it's like, I wonder if this works. Does that sound better? I think that sounds better. No? Sounds good. I'm sorry. I'm real. All right, there we go. So Brian, we'll, we'll roll with this for a little bit. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Even yeah, Chris Johnson, Patty is great. Patty is awesome, and she has so many cool stories of just different things. Um, one of the coolest stories, and I hopefully Pat, Patty can come on and tell the map story and <coughs> how uh, even Eric pretty much did a video and called her out and and pretty much told her he knew where Massachusetts was. So. <laughs> She says worlds collide. Yes. I haven't seen Patty. I wish I knew the last time I actually ran into Patty. It's been a while. So where's this picture I got put up here? That's Nashville. This was the Nashville show? Oh, no. The the one photo? Yeah, I won the old Eric once. That is from uh, Wilkes Bar, PA. Okay. Let's see. I, I grabbed a couple off your page earlier. Yeah. I knew, knew that was a good one. Man, you got a lot of pictures with this Dan guy. I'm telling you. Yeah. It's funny how Dan and I met, too. You guys must get in a lot of trouble. <laughs> <laughs> you got to tell me the story how you guys met. Because now you're going to bring it up. Yeah. Dude, this is a well, perfect picture. Dan, Dan and I were moderators in the holding our own group. So 
that's how we got to really it. so you were in there with me then yeah why do I, oh yes i do remember this it was us three um and then the other two ladies and what was the other one kevin no kevin wasn't in it then no uh -oh. That was funny. Yeah, I forgot. That's when all this. That's when you kind of like you and I and Dan are like uh, yeah. I don't, started I don't talking about that part. But, <laughs> so, you know, like I said, I drove to Buffalo because we were supposed to go go to the Buffalo Choir Party with them, and we never we never got to see each other really. And uh, then we finally met up at your pre party in Nashville, mm -hmm. which almost didn't happen for me, but. <laughs> uh, but at the last minute, I got a last minute flight, and my wife said. You got to go. You got to go because we were supposed to drive down and then our plans changed. And so I wound up flying down and missing my I flight and missing my I next flight. <laughs> I, I got to the party late. And, but that was the first night I basically met everybody was at the pre-party mm -hmm. on the last night of the Holding My Own tour. That was, yeah, that was an amazing tour. I'm trying to this picture. You guys are having a good time in this one here. That must have been Texas. That's Texas inside the hotel. Yeah. <laughs> Texas was wild, man. That was a wild trip. That that was one of the best things that, that ever happened, going to that Woodlands concert. Yeah. Well, and I loved it that we were all in the lawn. That was one of the coolest things that we all picked. It, it was best when we were all together and singing, and everybody was just looking at us like there's 150 crazy fucking people next to us. <laughs> Yeah, there was a lot of us. Oh, here we go. There's a picture I was looking for earlier. You talking about the Dan story? <laughs> yeah, that's what I met. Been friends ever since. That was at the pre-party, though, holding our own, wasn't yeah, it? That, that was at the pre-party. That's why I thought. All right. Look at that one. Let's see. Yes, Joel, Joel even said Texas was an amazing trip. It was phenomenal. Like I was. I had so much fun in Texas. I really wish we would stay at the hotel, but I'm kind of glad we didn't because I probably would have gotten some trouble. <laughs> it was so much, it was so been, much fun that first night in the, at the pool. <laughs> I would have been riding the luggage cart with Walsh. <laughs> it was like four in the morning. I was out hanging out, and I and no, I wasn't the last one to go up to bed. Uh, it was too much fun. Oh, I know. Yeah, Texas Nikki. Nikki was even saying Texas was awesome. Walsh was chugging beer and doing backflips in the pool. And then he'd fall asleep for a little bit and come back like an hour later. Yeah. Uh, that was too much fun. Oh, that was a blast. I actually met his cousin, Michael, on Saturday night. I'm sorry, this mic is just... I'm going to be fighting with this mic all night long because it's just driving me crazy. But I met him Saturday night. He was at the Chiefs show at uh, Joe's Live. And... um. I didn't get to see the show, but I got to meet him briefly. And then when we had to leave, my buddy actually had a little incident at Joe's. Stone cold sober. We don't know. Still don't know what happened. He said he was dehydrated, but he kind of just fainted and blacked out for a little bit. And they had called the ambulance. And um, he wrote him and his wife rode up with us. So we, we had to take him home. It was, I think we left like about 10 minutes before Chief took the stage. So all this hype I was doing on the show, I couldn't wait for it. And then it never happened. <laughs> That's so, cool. yeah, it is, but it, I mean, you got to do what you got to do. And he's my buddy. I got, I got to make sure he gets home. I got to make sure he was taken care of. There'll be another chief show, man. I, I told him man, he needs to get checked out. Similar situation happened to me this year during the double down tour in Milwaukee. And I know I scared the crap out of my wife. And so I, she's like, you got to get checked out. I did. I'm having pneumonia. So I told him, I said, you don't know, man, you live in Chicago. You can have anything. So he works in Chicago. I'm like, that can be pneumonia or anything. Could be dehydrated from work. So, but he he felt fine afterwards. But bar rules were, uh, or even the ambulance said that it's a liability. They can't let you back into the bar. <coughs> Walsh was. What, what did Nikki say? She says Walsh was the life of the party. He was passed out in the lobby of the hotel when I got there. Swim trunks and boots. Yeah. I think I got, <laughs> I I got find my room, room key. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't he lose like probably half a dozen room keys that weekend? In about an hour. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
I had one on here. It was so funny seeing the look on the, the guy's face that was behind the desk. And he's like, I can't find my room. I felt so bad for him. And then that one night when he, <laughs> we were talking about this last or the, on the post show with, <laughs> with Ed, the luggage cart story where he had to be rolled back to his room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So if you know that story, that's always a fun one. I don't know what happened with his phone. I don't know if I want to know what happened with his phone. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. This one is good. That's a good group right there, people. So, yeah, I'm going to have Carter come on this show eventually. I want to get him and Lonnie both. Have them come up here and do it live. Just do it like a live show. Give them like a case of bush light and see how far it goes. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen him in a while on Facebook. Carter, no, he. Yeah. Well, last I met, he, he was he was talking to a girl. So I don't know if I don't know if things are getting a little serious or or what. I'll have to check in on with him because he has been kind of quiet lately. Yeah, and Carter's not one who gets quiet. <laughs> so let's look at here. See, I moved all my stuff. Oh no, I can't click it. There's a, some comments I was reading. I moved my TV screen back further, and now I was like, I can't see nothing. Oh, he lost his phone. He always is losing his phone. He lost his phone one time. And uh, I think this is another thing. If you if you guys are on Patreon, go back and listen to our post show with Staples. And we were talking about a story in Chicago. And I think Walsh lost uh, his phone and ended up with Frazee. And uh, Frazee ended up putting Walsh and Staples in a domestic partnership for the night. <laughs> <laughs> on Facebook, you could go on there. And so he put Matt, Matthew Walsh in a domestic uh, partnership with Sta Scott Staples. And it lasted most of the night, and it was kind of an inside joke. And he spent all night trying to find that dang phone of his. <laughs> so, but uh, I think Frazee gave it back to him the next day or something. It was just hilarious. But yeah, Walsh was the life of the party, man. I, I looked forward to always hanging out with him, and he is definitely going to be missed. And thank you again for doing that video. Uh, I know I did that tribute for him, and you you said that video in for me, and it was amazing. So, speaking of tributes and going back, I pulled this picture. Sorry, my computer is being real slow right now, so I'm trying to post another picture. And as I talk, I post a picture. I'll try to talk about him if I can, if my computer will let me. <laughs> Stand by a second, man. I'm sorry. We might be just you and I talking here in a second. All right. Because <laughs> I can't pull any pictures or anything up. No, oh, this is spinning. Now it's going white. If something happens and we freeze out, we'll come back together. Don't worry. <laughs> so I was going to bring up. Um, what was I going to bring up? Oh, the green and. The green and black wristbands I know I'm wearing. You got a picture I pulled that you had them on too. And kind of like what it means. I know mine I've had since like November of that year. And it's kind of like I can't take them off. It just means something so much. And to you, I mean, what do they mean to you? Just the two together. I'm part of this group. <laughs> just being proud, being proud of being a choir member, huh? Yep. <laughs> All right. I love, I love you guys. <laughs> They're amazing, man. I mean, the choirs is a gr great group of people, dude. They always have been. I mean, always where it started from, and it's always this extension of the family. And uh, like I see it more as a family, I guess the choir. And well, it was like this for me. In in twenty fifteen, I joined, but I didn't meet anyone until two thousand seventeen. And the first person I met from church choir was Tammy Strickland. Okay. And she was like such a good friend to me all the time. Always hooking me up, you know, somehow with a poster hookup or a ticket hookup, you know, show she couldn't attend and offer her, you know, she gave me front row ticket for Outlaw Fest in Camden, New Jersey. See Willie Nelson and Eric Church. And really? That's awesome. Front row. Yeah. It is cool because it goes around like that. And I mean, there's been times where uh, Ira, he sent me a message. Yeah, I got to reply to him still. Uh, 
it, like he had an extra front row ticket he couldn't get rid of couldn't get rid of he's like and he knew i didn't have a ticket I, and i love these double down shows i just went to i didn't have any tickets i got them the day of best available i would walk up to the box office hey what do you got and just grab it and go if i was able to make it great because i really didn't know to the day of or anything else and uh he had an extra front row ticket for one time he's like hey man just come on up and hang out with me and and uh it was probably one of the best times because it was the front row behind the pit and I like, I know you, you too, you kind of go move around a lot because you don't really like the pit too much, right? Well, I've, I've only been in the pit three times and I like <laughs> it, but I just, well, a lot of times if I go with my wife, she mm -hmm. can't go to the pit. So I usually don't buy pit tickets. Uh, on the spur of the moment, I was able to go three times. So it's pretty cool. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, my wife's the same way. She, well, she just doesn't like standing, and especially with the way Eric plays, like, Hours upon hours, it's, just, it's rough. Yeah, three hours of standing. <laughs> well, then come because you get in two hours early, and he doesn't take the stage until like an hour and a half later. Yeah. Well, anyways, Tammy hooked me up <laughs> not even once, not twice, but probably a, do a dozen times in the, the past three years. You know, she called me when I was at the pre party and said, I have an extra choir loft ticket right behind the stage. And I had like some shitty third level seat. <laughs> and I was like, and then I like left the party and ran across the street. And I think I was probably like fourth person into the arena with Tammy. And I think it was Matt Hardy. And I'm not sure who else, but I, you probably, know, cut, I probably cut about 20,000 people online to get into the stadium. <laughs> Forgive me for forgetting whose name it was. I mean, I, you're not going to know, I don't think. But same thing happened to me with, um, I know we were talking about the party and the last night of the Holding My Own tour. I just had a regular seat, I think all the way in the back. I had pit the night before. And it was probably about an hour before doors opened up. Somebody, and I'm sorry for forgetting your name. I'm totally bad with names. Someone gave me an extra pit pass an hour before doors open, and I found out that I was going to be in pit for the last night of the tour. And it was amazing because then a couple of my other friends snuck me up front. They're like, oh, you belong up here. You've been at the party all day. I'm like, I'm good. I plan on sitting in the back. Like, no, I'll get up here. And then the very end of the tour, or the very end of the night, I got the lava lamp that was on stage, which was cool. So it's cool like how things like that happen, how you – you don't know where you're going to be, or you might be in one of those shitty seats or nosebleeds. And then just knowing somebody in the choir and they're like, Hey, well, I got this. Come sit with us. And it just makes it so much better. And that's why when I, when I went to green, uh, Greensboro, uh -huh. same thing. I bought like a $22 ticket. But when I got there, Tammy said to me, I just got upgraded to pit and gave me her like third row side stage. Yeah. Ticket. That is awesome. Yeah. And, yeah, it, and it always, you never know the day of, I mean, Tickets change hands so much. I know, what was it? This year, I, I was able to text a friend that uh, I used to work with at an old the at the theater I used to work with. And I know she, her and her husband were big Eric Church fans. They just never got to see him. And she's in the booking world and everything else. And she knew how big of the tour it was. And she wanted to see the tour. So I was able to get her out to Milwaukee one night for Double Down. But it was like three hours or four hours before the show. I was like, yeah, I got these extra tickets. How fast do you get to Milwaukee and get a sitter and... They were able to make it out, but it's like you never know until the day of, and then tickets just start changing hands, and next thing you know, you're in the pit and having a great time. <laughs> yeah. I was in the pit two weekends in a row. Uh, it was after the hold of my own tour. He played Outlaw Fest, mm -hmm. and basically Tammy gave me a free ticket for a front row pit, and the pit was seats. So I was I remember that because yeah, Taylor was there because yeah, Taylor said that's where you two met. Yeah, that's where we met. She was, was so funny because like I, I was sitting in their seat because they they didn't you know get there right until Eric came down. Yeah, uh, you know, they you. just came from uh, <laughs> from the Alabama shows probably where Eric just came from. Mm -hmm. when he played Tuscaloosa and wherever else, and I was sitting in John Seltzer's seat, and they came in and he looked at me and he goes, "You're in my seat now." And I like looked up at his belly button, basically. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, "Yeah, no problem. I'm just gonna move over to my seat right next to you." <laughs> it was the coolest, the coolest thing. Uh, like halfway through Willie Nelson's performance, there was this guy who was there with his dad, and his dad had to be in his 80s. 
and uh, John was in standing in the front row, and he he pulled the guy and he said, "Put your father in front of me so he could see." And I was like, I I knew like these people are special people to do that. Yeah, for strangers. Yeah, it's it's so cool. I mean, like he did, just different people. He, he did the same thing in New Hampshire. This guy was behind me and. He wanted to get his record signed, and he was probably like four rows back in the pit. So, you know, he was holding his record up. But John said to him, he said, come stand right in front of me right now and pull him up to the front and had him get his record signed. Yeah, John's one hell of a guy. He's another one that I'm trying to get in, and uh, I want him to come. He doesn't live far from here. So I'm trying to get him to come and actually do a live show with me sometime. And uh, – I think it'd be fun with we were talking with him and hanging out and whatnot. And he has stories because he has stories not just from church and it's just other bands and that he's gone and see. And I know he's a big brothers Osborne fan too. Yeah. So he has a lot of cool stories I'd love to hear from. But I mean, this is what he does for kids too. I mean, how many kids does him and Johnson lift up and whatnot and taking care of in the pit? Yeah. I got uh, to so this at first too, huh? Awesome. <laughs> Liz says she sold you sold her seat too. Yeah, same thing. Liz Berger came right when Eric Church came on. <laughs> I, I I went in a little bit early. I got to catch the Yvette Brothers right before. I think it was the Yvette Brothers right before Eric Church. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad I went in for that because that was really good. I hear they're really good. Oh, it was a, it was a killer show, and they had a great fan following there. <laughs> Taylor, one of these days we should all do a tell all story. That be or tell all show. That'd be fun. <laughs> She said John has some stories he can't tell. Yeah, I'm sure he does. It's not even stories that he can't tell. It's the stories he can't remember. Well, see, like, <laughs> that's the coolest part for me was going to that show. And I was supposed to like sit in the grass, you know, up in the. And because Tammy gave me that ticket, I got to meet Taylor and Mitch and John and Linda and Debbie Rigoletti and, and Liz Berger all were right next to me. And then right Right by me was Mary Bulky and Vicky Morton McPhee. I gotta get up there for a show. That's one heck of a crowd right there. Yeah. I mean, it's trouble. It spells trouble, but. <laughs> Where's this picture at? I got this from your page today. That's from the Uncasville show in 2014, where uh, in Connecticut. That is an awesome, awesome picture, dude. Outsiders tour with the Devil Devil. Dude, that was. I wish they would bring the devil back. <laughs> I love that was, that was the it was like so weird for me because I was like, it's so sits in the like, man. I thought our church was country, and then all of a sudden he's like angry rock and roll. <laughs> <laughs> but and it was weird because, like, at first I was like, I didn't really like love it immediately until I went to see it live. And once I saw it live and I heard Cold One live and Devil Devil live. <laughs> And then Outsiders Live, I was like, man, I do love this. Oh, I'm, I'm telling you, there's some little messes. Some of them live, and there's songs. That, is there ever been a song of Eric's that you've heard on the album, but you weren't just you weren't crazy about, you weren't a fan of until you oh, heard it live? Yeah, definitely it was Cold One back when it first came out. Okay. Yeah. yeah like mine was like, like Round Here Buzz was definitely one for me. Um, hometown, give me back my hometown was another, but uh, around here, Buzz really got me. I think on the double down tour, I really started falling in love with that song. Then I love it live too. This was cool, following the lights around, and it was cool. <laughs> Let's see, I love the intros that he did on the double down tour for some of the songs. Oh, yeah, dude. I mean, I liked. I liked, well, Intro to Cold One was good with the Hank, but I didn't like it when he did back-to-back -back nights. If he's going to do, like, a cover like that, stick to one night, I think. But then again, a lot of people just went one night or went one or the other night, so I could see why he was doing that. I mean, that way, but... Let's see. Sorry, I'm looking through these photos real quick. And... Looking to see which ones I want to share and post. I stole some good ones from you today. <laughs> so you sent some over, and I want to talk about this. You said it was the best day ever. 
And you yeah. got to meet two people one day. Let me put up a picture of those two people before. Let's see. So there's a story behind that day, too. Uh, <laughs> I'm not even it. supposed to go to this Taste of Country Festival. And I have no ticket or anything. And um, what, what year was this? 2017. No, yeah. 2000. I think it's 2018. I don't know. <laughs> they all run together after a while. I think it was 2017. Uh, give me a minute to think about it. <laughs> it was after the Hold of My Own tour. Yeah, I think it was 2017. I, I think it was like after Eric was sick. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> I'm having a hard time remembering that part right now. Oh, it's all good. Yeah. We don't need no dates. We just need to hear stories. Anyways, right? That's all we're doing. A friend, a friend of a friend from the church choir, has a three day pass for VIP Outlaw for the Taste of Country Music Festival, and they're going to Nashville to go to CMAs. And you know they wanted to sell it, but of course I didn't have any money to buy it or whatever. And they just mm -hmm. this lady who I'm friends with named Debbie Rigoletti just mm -hmm. gave me her three day pass, even though I only went one day, but. It was an incredible day. It was basically a free, you know, full day pass in the pit and discount on food and drinks. Oh, wow. And got to see Ashley McBride and Eric Church and had a meet and greet with Ashley McBride and Eric Church. And <laughs> how did you pull that off? Year, sure what? During record year, I held up my records and Eric walked right over and signed both of them. So, it was, see, you're having a great day. I was pretty much. Pretty much a day that you, you couldn't ask for anything better. This was Taste of the Country. Where, where, where was that? Uh, Catskills, New York. Oh, yes, yes. He was supposed to play the Catskill Mountain. He did, well, he did. Was that the show he played right after CMA Fest, right? It was when CMA Fest was because he didn't play CMA Fest. That's right. He, he skipped out. So, was that 2017? Or it was after the last. I don't know. It probably was. It was twenty. I think it was probably twenty eighteen then, because it was yeah, after his last fan club party. Yeah, it's twenty eighteen. Best day ever, Vicky says. Yeah, that's what I mean. Rob was telling me about it, and it sounded like the best day ever. So, like, I wasn't going. Vicky was like, "Come on, go! I'm going." But my my husband doesn't want to go. He doesn't like <laughs> the you know people in the crowds, and so and then I just wound up getting a ticket by fluke and. And so they actually play like a side stage? What, what's that? They actually play like a side stage that day? Yeah, I actually played a side stage and we were like right there for it. It was so incredible. I was gonna say, this is a small, it looks like a small stage. That's cool. Right where we were like getting the food and the drinks, she came out and every everyone that played played the side stage except for Eric. Oh, okay. It was pretty cool. That's cool because it's always fun seeing them like at the smaller venues. Yeah, and he came out and just played solo acoustic right for everyone in the crowd standing there. And then about a half hour later, her and the band went out and did their set. It's kind okay. of it's kind of weird because like when we got there, we were like front row pit right in front of the stage, and we went to eat and we basically lost our spot. And uh, I went and, and met up with Vicky Martin, and then our friend Susan Marshall mm -hmm. uh, showed up, and she had like a lawn ticket. Somehow she snuck into the VIP section and snagged us a spot like along the center rail, and that's where we stood when record year was on. And he like walked right over to me. <laughs> You're like, Thank yes, it's you. gonna happen finally. Yeah, <laughs> it's always yeah, a good, like, it's like a crazy thing. Time. Okay. Free ticket, two meet and greets, double record signing, all in one day. <laughs> That's like winning the lottery. For that me. is, dude. That is that is a really good day. Like that is actually a day where I'd probably go and buy a lottery ticket. <laughs> I'm thinking, just just roll the dice and like, okay, I'm gonna go and just just get a lottery ticket and just see what happens. <laughs> That's an awesome picture. Who, who's in this picture with you? That's Linda Lang and Susan Marshall. Uh, I was gonna say I thought that was Linda and Susan there. So this is Double Down Tour, correct? Double Down Tour in Pittsburgh. 
Oh, that was, all right. that was the first day. That was there. I was there somewhere. So tell me where you found the golden ticket. What show was it for? Uh, I won the double down ticket for Pittsburgh. That's the only oh, okay. it's like initially I wasn't going to Pittsburgh, but my um, daughter lives in Pittsburgh. And uh, when I got the the double down, t- the golden ticket, I decided to you know buy the second ticket for the second show. Since we're already going to be in Pittsburgh. So you got the golden ticket for his birthday show. For his birthday show, exactly. So I was driving to this record store, and like I knew all about it from all the talk on Facebook. And uh, I basically heard like all the record stores in the area that already were, was found at. So <laughs> I went to one anyway to see if they had a second one, but they didn't. And then I was just like, for the hell of it, I went to this other record store I knew of and I called on the way and I said to the guy do you have the Eric Church golden ticket and he's like what and I'm like the Eric Church Desperate Man album with the golden ticket and he's like yeah we have one oh no I was like I started you know my heart was like (laughs) started driving from you know going like 60 to like 80 and then I like went into the record store and of course there was no one in the record store except for me. And the guy's like, can I help you? And I was like, I'm here for the Eric Church Desperate Man. <laughs> and he's like, all you got to do is take your picture and it's yours. And I was like, thank you, God. <laughs> that was a pretty nice. cool moment. Yeah. It was, uh, I was camping. It was on Sunday. And that's when they started coming out and people started finding them. And I had a feeling where one would be. And it was in West Virginia. And I, I told my mom, I said, hey, call my cousin and ask her if she could run over to this record store real quick. And by the time we remembered and got it all together and she called, someone found it like an hour prior or whatever. Like it was found right be- right, right before. I'm like, man, if we would have thought about it a couple hours earlier and I would have called her sooner, I probably could have got that one. But I was like, oh, well. I'm like, they're all out. Because I was in the middle of nowhere. I wasn't even close to a record store. Yet, so I can even kind of run one down. <laughs> That picture Pittsburgh show though, man, that was a pretty dang good show. I mean, that was that was probably one of my top ones for the Double Down tour. I, I like the second night better because I like the um, Bruce Springsteen over yeah. the Billy Joel. Yeah, the second night was amazing. The, he did all the um, Springsteen songs in like uh, the medley. Mm-hmm. And that was cool because like I got to go and my dad was there and it was kind of a, a stress relief trip as is because. It was right after Jackson broke his arm. Right, right. So we were supposed to go anyways, but we were supposed to be going on a family trip. And <laughs> come to find out, no, it was kind of last minute. My dad and I took, took a trip to Pittsburgh. So That's right. You were going to go up to Niagara Falls, right? Yep. We were supposed to go to Niagara Falls and a bunch of stuff. So because we were going to go see all my family in Wheeling, West Virginia, and then go up to Pittsburgh, Niagara Falls, and come back home. And Yep. We canceled that, and then I already had the tickets for Friday night, and we had the front row side stage, and I really am like, I really just don't want to waste them. I I mean, I got them. I mean, I could just give them to somebody. I'm like, I really want to go, and so I looked at my dad. I said, come on, let's just go. I'm like, there's really nothing we can do here. He's home, everything else. He has his mom. So I'm like, let's just run, and Jillian's like, yeah, you guys just go and have a couple days. So we're like, your your dad's 50th show? Yes, it was my dad's 50th show that night. So he's got me beat. I'm at 36. <laughs> well, he probably only remembers like four. No, um, he got <laughs> lucky because they were like back in the day, we would be able to do like two and three in a row because he would play like back to back shows, like like the bar shows and stuff. So my dad got to see a lot of the bar shows. Um, my dad was there, uh, at the Chicago Tree Choir when he played on the back of a truck. I have a picture of my dad and Eric Church mulching a tree together. From back in the day. So, I mean, he was around uh, for a lot of the good times way back when. I mean, there's still good times now, but he was around for a lot of the older stuff. And um, he doesn't get to go to a lot a lot of shows now. He's slowing down. I still get to get him to a couple shows here and there. I'm going to try. I don't know if it's going to happen or not, but I'm going to try to get him to the Motley Crue Duff Leopard show this summer. So, we'll see. I don't know. <laughs> If Vince Neil gets his voice back, right? <laughs> yeah. Were you never a Motley Crue fan or what? Uh, when I was in high school, Motley Crue was big, but 
I never seen him live. Are you, are you going to spend money to go see this tour? I don't think so. No. Nah. nah. <laughs> Waiting for something. Uh, uh, well, I'm going to Myrtle Beach uh, for Eric Church at the Country Fest, but I was like hoping to see Cody Jinx again or something. Maybe I don't know. There isn't that, much that's really grabbing I'm me right Cody now. Jinx, but I'm hoping one of these days soon. One of these days soon, I'm hoping I can actually still get to see him next time he comes around to Chicago. The last time Cody, I think, was in Chicago, I don't know if any of my Chicago people are listening or not or watching, but I think Kit Moore was at Carol's Pub. And so I went, I had the tickets for Kip at Carol's and went and did all that. And yeah. So let's see, I'm trying to, I hate this, man. I need to either get glasses or a bigger TV. I need glasses. <laughs> I can never read anything I'm trying to trying to post up here or not. So we got to talk about something. It's 9 o'clock. I had this on my schedule to talk about. But earlier last year, so I don't even know when the date was, I got a message. I'm trying to think if this is the message. Yes, I got a message from this lady. I, I, I so you and I know her name, and she's a choir member. I really don't want to include her name. If her name does sneak on one of these screenshots, I do apologize. I don't think it will, but... I got this message, and uh, she's a nurse in Iowa, and she had a patient, and her patient was, as you can see in the message, uh, didn't have many days left, and she really wanted Jack Daniels bottle to give to her husband. And I made a post, and a lot of people answered the post that I put out there. I don't know. I thought I had. I don't know if it's the original. Oh, that's, that's probably say the date too. You know, I can't read read that either, but yeah, June. I was going to say, I thought I was around there. But I put out this post. And I know a lot of people answer this post. Robert was one of them. And you and I kind of started talking in private messenger back and forth about it. And you end up sending her. Well, you, you had your own personal bottle, which I got a picture of it. I was going to bring up old memories, your old bottle. <laughs> I got a new bottle. It's okay. I know. I saw that. So you had this bottle and you were very kind and actually sent this lady uh, your own Jack Daniels bottle. And in return, let's see, we got this photo back. And I never really asked, like, I don't know if like she like she never really wanted the detail or anything. Uh, but we do know it was a success because we have this picture and. This is the gentleman with the bottle that you sent in, and she was able to give it to him before, uh, yeah, before anything happened. So I want to or tell you I appreciate that, man. Everything you did, um, overnighting and rushing that bottle and packing it up so it got there on time. But this is what the choir does: is things like this where I just get this random message and. Next thing I know, let's see, I think this is the post we get. I, I, I didn't know the lady that sent me the message at first or anything. And I, I know a couple of my buddies kind of referred her to say, hey, reach out to Trivermate, or me, he can help you. And all I did was just put a post out there. It was the choir. It always has been, always will be the choir that does all this stuff. And dude, you came through in a big way. Uh, I don't know how many days she had once she got it, but I do know the bottle got there. And it's amazing. It's people like you that, I mean, you'd give somebody a shirt off your back. You're, just, you're an amazing dude. And I appreciate what you did for this, this gentleman here. And I'm sure it's something that just, he looks forward to every day when he sees that bottle. So just to know that you probably put a smile on someone's face and gave somebody connected a mel melody with a memory or vice versa. <laughs> but um, a lot of people have been so good to me too. Oh, dude. I mean, but that's how way the choir is. But I got to show you this, though. So this bottle right here, I don't know if you can see it. It's kind of hard to see because it's far back. But I posted it on my page. I don't know if I get to see this. So I had, I told you I was going to help you or figure out something. Let's see. No. Yeah, this is it. Let me pull up a couple pictures. So I don't have a good picture, but a couple weeks ago I teased the photo 
on my Gaining Fast on Memphis page. I don't know if you saw that or not, but uh, it was actually I had the bottle. Where did my picture go? Here it is. I had the this bottle engraved with the show's logo on it and whatnot. It's kind of like I said, it's kind of hard to see, but on the back side of this bottle, it's pretty cool because it's the only one I've ever had done. And let me take this off. But on the back side, I had this engraved, and it says 2019 Choir Member of the Year, Robert Wildenberg. So I want to send this to you and give this to you because I have no way in shape or form sanctioned to say you're a church choir member of the year, but I could say you're a choir member of the year. And for what you did and for that bottle you, you sent, I want to send this one to you as a thank you. But it's signed, or as you can see, it has your name on one side. This is the... My buddy Will Long, you know Will. Uh, oh yeah, good buddy of ours. He uh, he was out of the shop, and I sent him some sent him some money. I said, "Hey man, I need a I need a bottle done." And this is why I wanted to have this show and have you be the first choir member of the 2020 year and do something special for you. And uh, I kind of put off for four months, and I'm like, I'll give him his bottle. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's it's the only bottle I've ever had engraved with the show logo on it, and no one else is allowed to engrave it. It's kind of like the whole church thing, I, the thing. But if I mean, I don't care if anybody does. But the other side does have your name on it. I'll get your address and I'll get this in the mail to you. But uh, this is my payback. I told you I'd I'd have something for you and I'd pay you pay you back. But uh, that's for you, my friend. So for doing what awesome. you're doing. <laughs> Thank you so much. That's so no, awesome. Mary. Mary said she's crying now. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's just like something going above and beyond and sending your own personal bottle is just amazing just completely amazing to do that and that's why this is the least i could do for you uh just kind of give back to you um i give you something to hang on to if you drink it go ahead i mean if, if i ever on mount philly maybe we'll crack it open i don't know <laughs> so but uh i appreciate you doing that man you answered you answered the call when i needed somebody to step up i didn't have a bottle the only ones i had were all had my name and stuff on them i didn't have anything i could send i was trying to find one as quick as i could by the time I could get anybody out there and get one engraved or anything, I didn't know how much time the lady had or anything else. So you acted so quick and got it over to him. And I really appreciate that, man. It's one of my cool stories and probably a, one of, a story I'll tell everybody just kind of because I know my wife, my wife's a nurse and she works at a cancer hospital. So you hear you hear these stories all the time of kind of like patients kind of their final request and you are actually able to honor a final request. So. I appreciate that, man, and I think the whole choir does. Help us give, you. give us a bad, a good name. <laughs> <laughs> you got people like Staples giving us a bad name. No, I'm joking. <laughs> we love you, Staples. <laughs> we do. Love, I love Scott. Yeah, Scott, he's a good Scott, guy, man. Scott, dude, Scott was so cool to me in in Texas and in Nashville again, and even last winter, there's four guys from the choir who really like. We're going to do something for me that just blew me away. Dude, I mean, well, you do so much for other people. And that's why, I mean, other, we want to do, always want to do stuff for you yeah. and help you out. And like I said, this is the least I could do for you. And especially, I mean, for, I, I told you I was going to replace your bottle. And I, I, when I was going to replace it, I'm like, I want to replace it with something that's going to mean something different. That's pretty damn cool, man. And then when I was like, I was thinking about it, I'm like, well, this would be kind of cool. I've never had one done before. And I'll give him the very first one. I'm hoping... Next year, if I keep this going past 50 shows, maybe next January, I, I'll pick somebody else and I'll get another one made up and uh, we'll do a 2020 fan of the year. <laughs> so, but um, yeah, I really appreciate it's like you going out above and beyond because back when like Pat, Patty and all of us started kind of before the choir ever was formed, that's all we ever wanted out of this. And that's kind of like why I brought up the Rascal Flats thing earlier. And you hear people kind of like just talking, talking smack and talking bad about it. It's like we didn't, the choir never was to throw people under the bus. Yeah, we got the sign to beware the church choir. We've been called rabid um, a, a lot of times in the past, but we're not, I mean, we're not ones to kind of talk down on other artists and put them underneath the bus because you know dang well, if that was church today announcing his farewell tour, you know how many people will be talking crap saying, "Oh, I'm glad that anti NRA Rolling Stone blah blah blah, blah ass is no longer <laughs> touring again." And we begin fired up, and we get, we, I mean, 
So what's the point of it? I mean, because you know, Rascal Flat fans are probably like, screw those church choir people. <laughs> but <laughs> there's no fan club that will ever be better than the church choir. And I don't care what anybody says about it. Put it up. I mean, we'll come on. We'll throw down. <laughs> I don't know. Keith Urban has the 100 club, so that's kind of cool. But still, church choir is a lot better. <laughs> so let's see. Where do you want to? Is there any special stories? We got about yeah, 20 minutes left or so of the show. Told you it's going to go by quick. So you didn't even know it's going to be 30 minutes yet. I'll quickly go over my trip to Nashville because it was a last minute thing for okay Memorial Day weekend. I wasn't going at all. And the last minute, my wife was like, just get a ticket and go. She actually bought my ticket. And I stayed with Andrew, Reed, and Liz Berger on their couch in their room for free. <laughs> I bought like a $20 up a deck ticket. And I sat with Will Long, Carrie Lynn Hyde, Betty, Rachel, Dan and Lynn, and the Grams. You guys must have been far from us then, man. That was, that was a heck of a crowd. Yeah, well, we didn't start off all together, but we were all very close in proximity, and we wound up being able to sit all together. So it was, it was a pretty cool deal. Um, Carrie and the Super Friends somehow <laughs> got me into the choir party, and they paid for everything for me the whole day, basically. They bought, got me the shirt and all the souvenirs from the choir party, and uh, I didn't pay for anything. <laughs> it was crazy, and then... I would show up at the the Sonny's party and, uh, you know, Scott lets me in and says, you know, because I was last minute, I didn't get to pay or anything, so I didn't know I was going. Mm -hmm. It's just so good to me all the time. Yeah. And like I said, good things happen to good people, man. I, I drive to the airport because I think I got to catch my flight and I leave the party early and I get to the airport and my connecting flight is delayed. <laughs> and uh, I call Mary Bulky on the phone because I know Mary's driving home. And Mary swings by the airport and picks me up, and we drive home from Nashville together instead of flying home. Oh, man, that's <laughs> awesome. It was like driving right past where my car was parked at the airport where I flew out of. So it was like perfect. <laughs> it was so funny. We listened to Desperate Man the whole way on repeat from Nashville to Wilkes Bar, PA. And then Mary said she listened to it the whole way from Wilkes-Barre to her house, which is like another three hours away. <laughs> just sharing stories over a bunch of awesome tunes. Oh, my God. <laughs> just driving the pedal to the metal. Oh, yeah. And it's always it's always fun like that. I mean, there's really – it's it's cool because you never know – anywhere you go, there's a choir member. And I've always – I know, I mean, I've always talked about this story. Um, my cousin was actually on his way. He doesn't know. He's been to one Eric Church show, doesn't know anybody in the choir. He was on his, when I used to live outside Memphis. He's on his way to Memphis on Greyhound, and he actually got stranded in St. Louis for the night. And I had some friends in the choir. I said, like, "Hey, my cousin's downtown St. Louis at the Greyhound station. He's stranded till the morning. I can't get there for a couple of hours to even pick him up." I'm like, "Can you guys take him in? They have set him up on his couch, feeding him dinner, giving him all this stuff, and I just totally took care of him. Didn't even know who he was, but just because it, it was somebody I like." I just asked them, like, hey, do you mind helping them out? And they did. I just didn't want them to sit in a cold bus station for four hours or whatever until it took me to get to Memphis. Or the whole, to, the whole time I was in uh, Nashville, I didn't see Mary once. Like, I, I didn't see her at the show, at the pre-show or anything. I didn't see her at the party. And then I was just like, I don't know what made me call her and say, are you still in Nashville? <laughs> <laughs> I was lucky I, I was lucky that she was able to get me oh yeah man that's awesome especially if you I mean i think i mean i'm not a flyer i don't like to fly i'll fly if i have to <laughs> if i have to fly i'll do it but i mean if i could drive i'd much rather put a couple cds on or whatever and just go for a nice little ride and be done with it so well, it was 300 bucks round trip to nashville and back can't beat that no, not at all, dude. And I got a hundred and fifty dollar refund because my flight got canceled. Yeah, and be like, I didn't even fly home. I, I had to drive. Okay. I, I, I basically, you know, my wife paid for my ticket, one hundred and fifty dollars to get there. The whole time I was there, the church choir people were taking care of me, like <laughs> left and right, everywhere I turned. And then I got taken care of coming home. 
That is phenomenal, man. Yeah. That is awesome. And, and now you got some Jack to last year for a while, too. So, <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I ran out of Jack last week, and that was another reason why I got probably enough for like I mean, a little bit of a drink. That was another reason why I'm like, you know what? I'm not even going to worry about buying any more right now. I got a couple bottles up there that are decorative bottles that I'm like, eh, I'm not going to drink out of those. So. But I don't know. We'll see how long. I'm not going to quit drinking. I'm just going to see how long I could go. So. Yeah, I'll make it a hundred day goal and so, or so. Hundred days. <laughs> I don't know. Well, Illinois just well, I mean, I've had a medical card for a while, but Illinois is recreational now, so I much rather I, I like myself better. No hangovers. <laughs> I agree. If I can escape the hangovers, I'll do it. So I'm a happy person. Yes, Taylor, road trips are the best. You you just got an awesome one. I was kind of jealous of your Christmas trip. So I'm actually gonna I'm trying I'm gonna try to talk my wife into going to Red Rocks this year. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> I've always wanted to go to Red Rocks and check it out, but we'll see what happens this year. <laughs> All right, man. I got a game we gotta play. I gotta get my yeah. thing. Right. So I'm sure you've seen the shows where we play and I ask I ask some questions. Little hot seat questions. Let's see. I got some good ones for you this week. So you're going to have 60 seconds. I'm going to put on the clock. You're probably going to get like three questions in, and then we'll probably have to skip a couple, <laughs> but whatever. All right. One lyric of Eric Church's that stands out. On the day I die, I know where I'm going to go. All right. If you're going to listen to one Eric Church album, what album are you listening to? Miss the Misunderstood. Ooh, that's the first one. Nice. One song Eric has never covered. You want to hear him cover? Small Town by John Mellencamp. Ooh, that'd be a good one. I thought you were going to pull out some Aerosmith. <laughs> <laughs> Who is your dream opener for Eric Church? Probably nobody because you don't show up until he shows up. He goes on stage. Yeah, I'll stay clutch. Ooh, that'd be a good one. Have them close with Electric Worry. Yeah. <laughs> dream venue to see Eric Church performing. Red Rocks. Yeah, that's my bucket list too for him. All right. These are all non-Eric questions. So who have you seen live most other than Eric? Probably Kiss. Nice. All right, you're, you got through six on your 60 seconds. That's good. How many times do you think you've seen Kiss? Probably six or seven. Nice, dude. I'm about, I think, four or five. So I saw the 3D, the Psycho Circus 3D tour. Then there are... Their farewell tour with Ted Nugent and Skid Row. And then the Miley Crew tour, like the tour they called it. When they did that with Miley Crew, I saw that one. When I when I was in the seventh grade, my uh one of my good friends named Richie Sackett, his his mother's sister was dating Eric Carr at the time. Oh, dude, no way. Yeah. <laughs> that is so I cool. To meet him like all the time on the weekends. <laughs> That is pretty neat, dude. I, I, it's cool because like now my my kid, like I was talking earlier, Jackson loves talking about Kiss and always wants to listen to Kiss. We, my dad and I took him to see Kiss earlier. That was my first concert. I, I remember that. Kiss. But uh, one of these days, I'll I'll go into my entire Kiss story. I'll probably have to be drinking for that one. But I took my but, kids when they were little to the Psycho Circus tour. Oh, dude, that was a fun one. The 3D glasses. We had floor seats and. Paul flew right over top of our heads. That was awesome. <laughs> yeah. So where is your best spot to vacation at? Ooh, probably Florida because my parents live there and my brother lives there, so we stay nice. for free. <laughs> what part? <laughs> uh, Palm Beach County. Okay. All right. South Florida. All right. What's one song that you love that you hate to admit? Mm. A not a church song? Uh huh. Non Eric Church. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I like a lot of music, but uh, I don't know. I can't answer that one. That's tough. <laughs> Pop song, Rascal Flat. No. All right. This is this is my. This, I was gonna try and hopefully throw this uh, off. You, you, you hoping I was gonna say like tequila or something? <laughs> <laughs> this next one though, uh, I'm gonna go off of Ricky Gervais's uh, opening to the. What was that? Golden Globes or whatever, with Martin Scorsese. When yeah, uh, what rides can you ride at an amusement park? I go on every ride. 
<laughs> Everybody what was it, Will? Will Long always calls you his little friend. I'm like, man, you better watch out. He might be little, but he could whoop you up, dude. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, I had to throw a short joke in there just for you, man. All right. What my last question was, what has been your most difficult challenge you've ever had? Well, been through a lot. I know. Well, I know you and I have had a couple of talks, and I gotta say thank you so much for a couple of messages you've sent me. Uh, I mean, going all the way back to like 2018 and stuff. I know you saw a few f- me posts and stuff that I put on Facebook that may have rubbed you the wrong way, and we've had some wrestling chats and stuff, and it's cool. But I mean, what have you faced that's been difficult in life that you want to talk about, or yet you can? <laughs> well, uh, my first wife died when I was 26. She had a brain aneurysm, and uh, that was pretty challenging. Wow. Yeah. How long were you guys together? Uh, like five years. Had two kids. Oh, man. So. And it was, sorry, was she the same age as you? or? Yeah, we were both, well, we were both 25, 26. Did you guys know it was coming on or just kind of some of uh, She said, I'm, I have a really bad headache and fell on top of me and died. So. Jeez, man. That, that has to be, I would say that would be your most difficult time. So that was pretty difficult. And what did you get through by it? Music was probably one of your biggest things, huh? Probably. <laughs> I wasn't even an Eric Church fan at the time. No. Just, that was probably some good old Aerosmith, though. Some old school. <laughs> I like, All right. I, what was that? I liked, I liked a lot of classic rock back then. Yeah. Oh, that's that's what I was growing up on. My dad pretty much raised me on classic rock. My mom was the country. And it was cool because then every now and then you could kind of see it. I mean, Collide. Back then, Eagles was classic rock. Today, Eagles country. I mean, Eagles is more country than King Brown. So, yeah. in my eyes, I, it's, especially now they have been skilled. So, um, like, it was cool, though. I was watching that. I, I know I played a clip of it, but I was watching that Rascal Flats clip from Good Morning America today. And they talk about it, like they because they talk about the pop and everything else and Taylor Swift, how she opened up for him, how she's pop. And they talk about the country music genre. And it's true. I mean, it's such a wide variety where a lot of people could be country and be all walks of life. I mean, Eric Church, I don't think he's country, but he's classified. He's more singer songwriter, John Prine uh, type ish to me than Bruce Springsteen. He fits more in the Bruce Springsteen category than he does country music country. mold what was that i agree with you he, he does you know he's not very country for a country singer yeah not at all but it's just like they kind of say well what is country these days and it's i mean country back in the 70s 80s i mean that was your your johnny cash is your i mean that was your what they what they say your 90s music country if you played it backwards you got your house back your car back your dog back <laughs> <laughs> so it's yeah. just like country has evolved so much and I think it, it could be pop, it could be rap, it could be Eric Church, it could be rock, it could be Southern rock. I mean, country is just kind of like, it's more the way you're feeling, I think. It's more the way you're thinking of life, in a way. I love and country music now. Vicky says Eric Church is his own genre. It is. I mean, it is. I, well, country music now, is, I think, is going back to something. I know Johnson and I talked about it briefly. Uh, Riley Green, uh, people like that are just bringing back. Good country. I mean, I, Luke Combs. I know a lot of people aren't Luke Combs fans, but he's bringing back 90s country, like the Brooks and Dunn style. And I love 90s country, man. I mean, you'll never get 90s country back, I don't think. Crazy Lawrence, Joe Diffie, all those kids, guys. Yeah, it's before I was into country music. <laughs> if you ever go back, check them out. I mean, I, well, my guy in the 90s was Billy Ray. I was a big... Like I always tell people, Billy Ray before Hannah Montana and after Aki Break, he was probably the best. But I was a big Billy Ray Cyrus fan, and just it's funny. I don't know. He he was more rock. He was. I mean, after he got off the Some Give All album, there's a lot of it. It was a lot of rock music, and you'd go see him live, and those guys would jam, and they would remind me of a lot of Church's band. So when he would, it was, just, it was fun back then, and then he get started doing his Hannah Montana crap and. Yeah. <laughs> Someone said Eric and Luke Combs were her favorite concerts. Eric and Luke Combs, they're gonna be good. I mean, they're gonna play. They're playing Cal, uh, 
what is it, South or North Carolina this year together? It's gonna Play be Myrtle Beach. Myrtle Beach, yeah, that's gonna be a good one. I want, I'm gonna try to get that one. I have no church shows in 2020 planned yet. That's right. what we're going. Are you going to that one? My wife got me a ticket for my birthday. Nice, nice, nice. Maybe I'll see you out there. We'll see. I don't know. I'm mentioning. I gotta get out there soon. So. Me too. Well, man, it's getting that by that time. So I'm gonna have to say goodbye tonight. We're gonna get together in about 15 minutes or so and we're gonna do a pre-show or a post show we're gonna have some fun and tell some stories <laughs> okay <laughs> so we'll chat so i'll send you another link in about 15 minutes or so uh just take yeah, take a little bit of break and we'll chat soon okay man okay later <laughs> all right dude take it easy thanks a lot so much for joining us tonight thanks for having me on all right dude all right, that is Robert there. I have been looking forward to giving him this bottle for I don't know how long. I've kind of kept it. It hasn't been the one that's been sitting here every week. I actually just got it not too long ago from Will, but it's really cool. And it's the biggest surprise I think I've ever kept. A few people knew about it. And um, yeah, not, not many people knew about it. I wanted to keep it kind of on the down low a little bit to surprise Rob because he's done so much for so many people. And uh at least I could do to give back to him in a way. So uh, I'll put that in the mail for him. But uh, it was awesome. I know he was really nervous leading into the show. And we had to work on him a little bit to get a few answers out of him. But it worked out. And it was amazing. But I, I want to give a huge shout out again to my sponsors, Arlo Revolution, Janet Stoloth Creative, uh, and Joel Art on Higher Wire. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much for sponsoring us, all of our Patreons. Earlier, you saw I posted up uh, our January giveaway. A lot of cool stuff in there. Um, so if you haven't been, signed up on our Patreon yet, go ahead and check it out. The link will be in all the show notes uh, for this later on tonight on YouTube, iTunes, everywhere you go to get your podcast. You get the link over our Patreon. Tons and tons of cool little perks. And I'll be adding stuff all the time over there. So every month, I'll constantly I'll be adding stuff. Last month, I know I had an extra coffee mug that I got in the mail. I gave away. Who knows? I mean, I just tons of promo stuff I'll get and I'll probably just throw out there and just pick a name. If you're on our Patreon, you'll get a name and you could actually win something or whatnot. We'll see what happens. But uh, thank you guys again for tuning in tonight. It was really a lot of fun with Rob. Next week, another great show. Uh, we got the twins coming next week. So I'm going to kind of prep for this one. I think I'm frozen. <laughs> Oh, now my exit's not going to play. So, <laughs> hey, Liz, thank you so much. Let's see if I can get this to play. No, see, there we go. Things never work ever. I don't know. I don't know how Rogan does every week. He must have a good producer. I'm just terrible at it. Thanks for joining us, guys. I'll see you guys next week. Have a good one. Fast on Memphis Podcast with Aaron Shriver celebrates the music and fans of singer songwriter Eric Church. Join Aaron again next week as he shares inside stories and life adventures with another amazing member of the church choir. And remember, everything you need to know about the world can be learned in the church choir. Thanks for joining in on the fun, and we'll catch you next time on the Gain and Fast on Memphis Podcast with Aaron Shriver.